you kind of went through um, you, the experience that kind of catapulted you on this trajectory of wellness and health. Can you share yeah. with um, our listeners like what that experience was? Yeah, so it was during, and you weren't there anymore, but during my senior year there, my daddy was diagnosed with stage four liver cancer. So, and you know, it was something with a blood disease. So it was something that he, his grandpa, his grandpa had also had, and he had kept track of it throughout his adult life. But somehow between two six month checkups, he went from being told he was fine to um, being diagnosed at stage four. So that just, you know, that it, I, that changed my life. And he obviously. was young. Yeah, he was only, well, he was, he passed at 48, so he was only with us for a, a, a little over a year yeah. after that diagnosis. So he was, that made him like 40, you know, six, I think, 47. Um, so yes, yeah, so that happened. Um, and it was, and during that time, you know, he did Western medicine, of course, you know, he did chemo and radiation, he did Chinese medicine because he drank these teas that our relatives shipped to us from like Hong Kong and China, but he was pretty far along. And then after he passed, um, two months after, our mom was diagnosed with a rare form of ovarian cancer, and she was 45 at the time. Mm. So this was like... I mean, it was just, if I think, it's so hard to even remember it all. It's still kind of this haze and this blur. Um, and she's still with us. But it was during their journey that I started to, like, look into plants and herbs. And, you know, just because the doctors didn't tell us much except for medication. You know, there was really no, there was just no even thought processing about food as more than comfort, as food is more than just a basic protein, as food is nutrition and medicine. So that was really how I kind of first got started looking at all of that. And I, I actually studied nutrition while I was at Berkeley too. I mean, I was poli-sci, pre-law, but I, I love to eat. So, you know, nutrition is just always something I've been interested in. And then it took a whole different turn when this happened with my parents. Oh, I think that's so interesting that you already had this passion and this love for food and mm -hmm. cooking in you. And then now it has, it's grounded in such purpose and you're helping others yeah. heal. Um, you said something to me one time about they were able to trace back your mother's yeah. or original tumor in her ovaries to the time uh, that she was dealing with your dad. Yeah. So it was like fully stress. Totally stress induced because there's, um, there was no history of cancer on my mom's side of the family. Even even now, she's okay. She turned 70, you know, this year. Thank None God. of her siblings, her parents, no one ever had cancer. And from the point of diagnosis to when she actually, we were able to have surgery and she had the tumor removed, it grew so rapidly that they were able to trace back. And from the rate of growth, it started when my daddy was dying. Um, and so, yeah, it was just the doctors were just like, this is, this is stress. And mm -hmm. she's been, she's been great since, you know, she did everything that she needed to do. Yeah, like what was her healing journey like? Because obviously she's a yeah. success story and ovarian cancer has a high likelihood of recurrence. Yeah. Um, unless you do kind of a full overhaul. So what was her healing? Yeah. So, you know, what's interesting with my mom is, so first she had to have a full hysterectomy, you know, and she was. 45 um, and of course she did chemo and radiation but she also did the Chinese teas and I I just really believe that she also had angels you know that my daddy was watching over her because it was very experimental so it was almost like there were 25 26 cases like hers before her so it wasn't that they had a set protocol that they knew worked we just it was kind of experimental what we did with her um, or what the doctors did with her um, diagnosis and treatment and she has been cancer free you know we she went through all of that um, and then I think that there was a real strong element of surrender uh, that came in that process my mom and I don't really talk about these things. It's very still traditional Chinese in that way, right? Um, things are sort of glossed over. But just knowing my mother and having been in that process with her, um, I think there was an element of surrender that came after a lot of uh, anger, of course, and confusion mm -hmm. and sadness because she had just lost her soulmate. Um, so there was like an element of, okay, if this is mine, at least I'll be able to be with him mm -hmm. again. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
I think that there's that yeah there was and so and it's challenging you know as her as her child you know to have to be on the side where I I remember telling her you know like you can't leave it's just not you know we we just lost our dad like we're you you got to stick around and do this um so it's interesting you know there's always that there's that as you say that knowing and then there's also and I'm going to talk 3D, 5D, right? But there's also that like existing here and the things that you do um, for this dimension. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there's a few listeners out there that understand <laughs> 5D. Uh, um, so then you you went to culinary school. You yeah. became a celebrity chef, very successful, and then you kind of Thank hit you. your own health roadblock. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So so of course that whole experience with my parents motivated me to go to culinary school. I just felt that watching, because my dad was such a foodie, you know, and then, and when he wasn't well, there's so little that he could have, A, that he could even keep in his system Mm. that would nourish him, and then that would nourish his soul, you know, the foods that he loved he couldn't have. And so I went to culinary school to really study food as medicine, but also not just medicine for the body, but for the soul, right, for the heart. Um, And because one thing happened another after another there just wasn't I didn't give time to myself you know my my daddy was got sick he transitioned then our mom got sick and she was in this healing phase and we had actually other relatives that were sick too in this there was I felt like it was this like five to seven year window where there was always someone sick um and I I felt that I kind of went from a 21 year old into like a yeah, I was like in my 40s instantly to try to take over my dad's role, which is also something that I put on myself, clearly. Um, and there was just no self-care. You know, I, I was in this caretaker mode uh, because I felt like that was what I had to do. I, I didn't want anyone, I didn't want to lose another person. Mm-hmm. You know, so the only thing that mattered was just the health and happiness of the people that I love. And that was my passion, which... It made sense and maybe noble, but it left me off that list. And so I had such high levels of inflammation in my body that um, I started having some health issues of my own. And I would, you know, have a lot of catering in, during the holidays because that is, you know, that's sort of the time of the year that we're the busiest in that space. And after every, it was after Christmas every year. We get super sick, you know. It was just almost systematic that my body almost anticipated this is when you get to slow down for a second. So then now we're going to be sick, mm. and then I get on antibiotics. So health challenges, and then inflammation, and I had to have a surgery because I had all this damaged tissue, which happened from it was almost like I, I had had a breast augmentation, and it was almost like my body didn't want anything foreign and it and couldn't it, integrate because you yeah, were so inflamed so inflamed and then also um I think it was just it was inflammation but I think it was also just I'm not integrated with myself you know from like a soul level you know and, and just from an emotional level so I had them they were fine for a while and then and then they they weren't and then there was a rupture that literally just came from the intensity of the scar tissue internally Wow. So I had to have a surgery to literally just remove all that tissue, um, remove that that ruptured implant, um, which was saline, so thank goodness for that. And then from there, I got MRSA, which is um, MRSA. It's a deadly staph infection in my chest, and that became my journey for the next, you know, eight years for another seven surgeries just trying to get this out because – for anyone who knows anything about MRSA or has that it has any experience with it, it's um, you know it's resistant to most medications, to most antibiotics, except for a couple, and it's pretty aggressive and it can be it can be deadly. Mm. Um, so yeah, and that also came from again um, inflammation, stress, not really taking care of myself mm. and implementing all the different ways that I could. Wow, and then um, so you. So you were already had this intention to heal others with food based on your and, and heal their souls and heal and yeah. this is your passion. And and you knew that with all your research, your parents' um, journeys, that food 
could be used as medicine. Yeah. That's, you know, the father of medicine even said it yeah. way back in the day. Yeah. Hippocrates, let thy food be thy medicine and thy mm-hmm. medicine be thy food. So then you, because of these surgeries, you were like wiped out, right? You couldn't oh, yeah. work. Yeah. It wasn't, it, it was, and that's, a, you know, that's actually a big part of my journey. So I would, I would have these surgeries and What's interesting is I knew what to do with food. I need I knew how to put it into my body. You know, I knew nutrition. You know, I knew how to prepare my body to have these surgeries. I knew how to recover to an extent, right? I knew I knew movement and I knew how to sort of manage this MRSA because we keep having these surgeries and I couldn't get it out. Um, but after and and of course every time I had a surgery, you're right. I was kind of out for at least a few weeks just to try and recover and. Most of those times, I didn't give myself enough space to recover. So, you know, a surgeon may tell you you're fine in two weeks. You know, you can go back to work. But really, it's your body that tells you when you're ready to go back to work. You know, it's your body that tells you when you're fully healed. And I would say that two or three weeks weren't enough for a few of those surgeries. And um, after my fourth surgery, I had this massive hematoma 12 days post-op. Um, and hematoma is basically when there's like internal bleed, there's bleeding mm. inside. And so I had this bleeding that was happening. There was a tear from a stitch because they had to keep grafting in, you know, tissue. They're, re- they're taking it out. You, you have you have to oh, replace it. Marissa. So um, so I had this this internal bleed from a tear from a stitch inside. And it was a it was a it was one of the moments in my life that um you really, you can go out of body, right? We're talking 3D, 5D. We, we go out of body sometimes, but that's this was a moment in time where the pain was so intense because you're bleeding internally. The blood has nowhere to go. Your body has to compensate for that. So your skin has to actually extend and stretch in order to hold that fluid. And it was so painful. I literally went completely out of body and was almost like watching myself, but then back into body. So... That from that experience, and I nearly died. I was. I have angels. They saved me. I, I had a surgeon that came. Um, that was from one of my uh, clients. Every time I think about it, I, f- I have an emotion about it. Just thinking like how blessed I am to have known people and everything, just in divine alignment, came together for the surgeon to save me and save my life. But. Um, in the recovery period, you know, I was barely mobile. You know, I definitely couldn't work. Um, I'd lost so much blood. I, I, I it, it was so much effort just to go from the from the bedroom to the bathroom mm-hmm. on a regular basis. And I clearly couldn't work as a chef. You know, I, uh, you know, I couldn't get behind the stove. I mean, I couldn't even, I couldn't even use the left side of my upper left side of my body for months. Um, my my left arm, and so. I, and so I started, um, I had to figure out another way, you know, to make a living. And at the same time, I realized, okay, I know what to do with food and nutrition. I know what to do with my physicality, but there's still like a missing element. And that was when I really committed to my spiritual growth. And there was a healer that I was talking to here and there before that, someone that one of my best friends had uh, referred to me and her family's saw this healer in person and on the phone she was in new mexico and i just committed during that time to to just talk to her once a month you know every three or four weeks no matter what was going on not a 911 call where i'm in a panic and need to talk to them but actually committing to that and during this time her name is noelle during this time we would work on she didn't call them energy centers she just called them uh what did she call she she called them well she she did she called them energy pockets or something mm-hmm. and and we'd go through my body we we do these sessions she would she would do releases and it was just Noelle's way but as i was listening to her and thinking about what she was releasing cuz we'd go through it after a session i just wondered if there was a way to support that part of my body while she was supporting me energetically and that was sort of how culinary alchemy came to be was is because i thought okay Maybe I could support that area of my body. I know how to support that area of my physical body with food and with supplements and nutrition. So I started playing with that a little bit. and um, Like the energy yeah. and the food. So nutrition combined with 
energy. Yes, and so the energy of the food and then also our chakra systems align with our physical organ system. So when you're when you're going, you know, from your base from the base of your spine up to the crown and you're looking at every chakra system and where the, the energies that they govern and the energy of the organs and the physical part of your body that it governs, it's very much in alignment. And so and so understanding that I could eat certain foods, you know, and drink certain and drink, you know, certain liquids and just have certain elements of food and nutrition, uh to support those areas of my body, I was also supporting my chakras. So it was sort of experimental, and I tried that, and I uh, started playing with that, and I, f- I really felt healing from that. And at the same time, I were working on my spiritual growth, and and uh, what I decided to do was do this for clients as well. So I couldn't cook for them, but I had all this knowledge of nutrition and and also you know Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic, and plants and herbs, and now energy work. And I thought, okay, one thing I do really know how to do is prepare my body for surgery and how to recover from surgery because, I mean, from that fourth and fifth surgery, my hemoglobin had fallen down, you know, to like nine, below nine, and and I'd lost so much blood, and, you know, they needed, they told me it would take me eight and a half weeks to be able to prepare the body to get back into surgery to repair things. And I was able to do it in five and a half, and that was just from a very you know, discipline sort of regimen, you know, protocol on how to heal that part of the body, how to build that blood. So I started doing with this with clients, um, and that's really what became culinary alchemy was that integration of uh, integrative and functional nutrition with what I call spiritual nutrition. Thank you for listening to the Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. Oh, and make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And if you feel inspired, we would love you to rate and review us so that we have the opportunity to reach more people. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram for some behind the scenes fun and more inspiration at at Heal Documentary and at Kelly Gorris. Thank you so much and be well.